Uh, so on Twitter today, I saw that I believe the person who made this um, project called Texturize, I saw them post some some examples on Twitter that I thought were really cool. So I thought we would go through this notebook and just sort of talk a little bit about what's going on here. So this is a uh, tool called Texturize. Um, this is the GitHub repo for it. Uh, this is essentially a model that does texture synthesis. And for texture, texture synthesis, which I'm having trouble saying, um, is a way of basically giving one image, um, so again, almost like SimGAN, um, producing one image, and from it being able to produce a variety of similar textures, but they're still unique, right? So you could think about doing this, like maybe you uh, want to use, this is something that we see pretty commonly in a lot of the work that I show. You could use SimGAN to do this. You could use neural style transfer and drop the content weight to zero. Uh, you could use um, content aware fill to like try to play with these things, right? Um, this is a, a, a technique that I think you'll see a lot with like gaming or other potential like uh, background graphics types of things, right? So let's say that your uh, rendering artist renders you one ground or like you know one type of ground, and you want to sort of make the game or make it look unique as you're as you're walking through an environment or whatever. So this is a way to generate multiple textures from one single image, um, which you know again is pretty helpful in certain scenarios. Um, there's a lot uh, to read here within this notebook, um, but there's also, or actually, sorry, within this GitHub repo, but there's actually a notebook attached to this as well. There's two notebooks. There's one for this uh, grass texture, and there's another one for a gravel texture, which it looks like you can also mash them up together. Um, so I thought we'd just walk through really quickly this CoLab notebook. Again, I barely taken a look at this, so maybe this will also be helpful for folks that are new to CoLab and just sort of want to see how I would approach uh, this sort of material. So this is the link to the uh, texturized demo. This is the one for grass. Um, one thing to make sure that is happening here, and this is noted in the uh, notes, is that make sure your runtime is set to GPU. Mine already is. Let's save. Cool. So the first thing we're going to do is it looks like we're going to install some things. Um, this comes as a uh, pip package, which is pretty great. Um, it makes installation like fairly straightforward. Um, and then it looks like once you've done that, you can also import some, some tools. So this is also an example of someone who has uh, taken a lot of the code that already exists in their repo and brought in as individual cells. So um, this is not generally the way that I work, um, but I think it's helpful to sort of walk through and see what happens with these examples. So we're gonna run this cell right up here at the top to get our installation going. And then it looks like we want to uh, download some uh, samples or at least have a URL to where the samples live. Um, and if you're not familiar with these uh, pip like commands you add in, dash q is quiet. That means it's not going to output what you're installing. Um, I don't know. I personally like that on. And then progress bar off is it's not going to show you how far it is in the installation process. Um, everyone on his own style, I personally like to leave these on, but this notebook chooses to leave them off. So you'll see you got no output in here. Um, so hope it worked. We didn't get an error message. So that's good. Uh, next, let's look down here. So all the images in this file are generated using this function. You can configure the parameters here if necessary. So this looks like um, there is a little bit of a GUI here. So I can set the resolution of the images. Let's set it to, to the small size, which is 0 0.3. Um, that sounds good because it's probably going to a little bit faster. And then quality, um, I would generally, for like a production project, probably set the quality really high. But let's set it low. Again, my guess is that this is going to uh, make it run um, faster in the beginning. So because this is a demo, I just want to make sure this runs. Um, also helpful that some of this is commented out. So there are target sizes here, and there are source crops. Um, we're not yet calling source crops anywhere, so I'm not sure exactly what this is. And then here is the uh, definition. So this is the function that runs um, in order to actually create the images. So it looks like we're just setting a bunch of variables and then declaring the, the most common synthesized function here. So we're just going to run this cell. And let's see, so sample grass one. So the original image is, um, so it looks like we're loading in the original image. So we're going to load the image from the URL, and then we're going to create a random crop, which looks like we're going to do the source crops resolution of 0 0.3. And then we're going to show the images as tiles. So let's run this and see what happens. So here are a bunch of random crops of that image. Um, Sure, if we come over here, we could look at that image itself. So 
So this image was what? This is grass one. So what it did is it took a bunch of crops of this image at that particular size, and all we're seeing here are those crops. So now what we want to do is we actually want to uh, feed in the grass one um, into our synthesized results. So this is going to synthesize the image, and then we're going to see what the synthesi synthesization looks like. Man, that is a tough word right now. All right, so as this process, it looks like it goes through something like a, like a multi-pass render. Um, so it might be doing things at different scales. That's a pretty common technique you'll see in super resolution, in you know Deep Dream, and a lot of other things. And it basically allows you to get different textures at different weight at different scales. Um, so it looks like this is still processing here. Um, you'll see here that my scale is half scale. Um, so it tells us what size we're running at. Octave is usually determined. That it tells you what scale you're using. Um, and then elapsed time, number of iterations we're running. So this is a pretty nice notebook in the way this is set up. It's like feeding you exactly all the information you want to need or all you would need. Um, so we're seeing our loss rate change a little bit here. And you'll saw, you see it like went really, really fast in those early iterations because the scale was really low. Um, as we get a little bit higher up, um, you'll see that this gets slower and slower. look in that synthesized function and see if you could set that. So you can set the target size. Interesting, it says we didn't set any octaves, which maybe we're not actually running, it's just purely scale. And then quality. So quality is probably how long this thing runs for. Um, so this was pretty low quality. Um, so we'll see what we get, or I guess it was about half quality. And this process is not the fastest, clearly. We're at about two minutes in. Um, I will say, I have to say already, that this is much faster than Syngan is. So clearly, there's some adv advantage to, to using this over other things. Um, you know, again, the problem with something like this is if it's going to take an hour for individual images and you have a lot of images to process, it's going to take a while. Um, this seems like it's running fairly fast, actually. Um, all things considered, and our size is decent. We're getting 736 by 352. Um, you know, and I'm not seeing a ton of, uh, well, I can't really tell, but it doesn't look like my, my RAM is getting spiked too hard. So this is all looking pretty good so far. While this keeps running, I'm just going to take a look at the notebook here again, or just sort of the, the repo. Um, one thing I did notice is that there are some common issues or known issues with this um, method. Where did I see those? Maybe they're at the end of this notebook. Nope. Somewhere in here, actually, it might be in. Um, the tweets from the project creator. So I'll link to that to those um, here in our YouTube video when we're done. Um, but I did notice that um, there's some common issues that they're aware of and, and that they're working on. One of them was um, duplicated patches. I have to say in this image, I'm not seeing anything that immediately stands out um, as purely duplicated. This is the thing you commonly see with um, something like uh, content aware fill where it just repeats stuff over and over and over again. So this finished running, it took, uh, what is that, four minutes? Um, it took four minutes to run. Um, this is definitely not the best quality. It's a little blurry. Um, I'd be interested to see, maybe I'll try this again with a 10 quality setting at a later point. Um, so there's now grass two and 
the grass three. So these are just using different images. So I probably don't really want to mess with this too much. Um, but this was pretty helpful. Um, just got to see how it works. Uh, it looks like there are a bunch of other commands here. So we could take these and bring them into a notebook. So maybe what I'll do um, in a later video uh, is I'll actually just bring these all into um, a new notebook uh, of my own use. And we'll be able to sort of see how all these other additional commands work. Um, but this is a pretty good intro to how this texturized library works. And I like that um, you know, they're doing some different stuff here in terms of UI. Um, so you can sort of see how, how different people are when making different UIs for um, Colab. So that's it for this video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I will say there are ways to train this with your own images. So again, maybe in another video we'll look at all that uh, in addition to using these more advanced techniques. So um, again, thanks for watching. Um, if you have questions, drop me a note in Slack or drop me a note on the YouTube channel. Thanks again.